Hello, everybody, and welcome to Seeds of Liberty podcast, episode 57. So we're going to go with Jeremy for the Bibcot No-Gov license. Yes, as always, the Seeds of Liberty podcast is covered by the Bibcot No-Government license. This allows for reuse by anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at bipcot.org. So today we Fuck have... Fuck government uh, agents. Anyways. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for that, Dave. Uh, so, so today we have a, a guest, uh, Jace Gordon uh, with a T, uh, <laughs> volunteerist anarchist. Uh, he's got his Facebook uh, page for his blacksmith shop called Red Fox Armory Blacksmith Shop. And if you want to go fund him on his, pay, on his uh, website, uh, uh, Solar Blacksmith Shop Chimney Fund, it's gofundme.com slash 53my63. <laughs> so, uh, Jace, thanks a lot for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. I always uh, enjoy when other be- bearded gentlemen come on the show. <laughs> really, you inspired me to grow mine out, actually. <laughs> oh, I did? Oh, yeah. I feel well, you and my buddy Nate were, like, growing gnarly beards at the same time, and I was just like, you know, I had the goatee for a while. I'm just like, screw it. Besides, razors are so expensive these days. You know, um, that just that just makes me excited <laughs> that I encourage people to grow beards. I mean... <laughs> Oh. Hashtag Anarcho Beards, man. I knew, I knew this would go to his. Oh, head. you got to start a new page now. You know that, right? Anarcho Beards. <laughs> there, there are oh, the page one. already exists. Anarcho but... Beards, Dave's. Dave. Oh, great. Group. Now I gotta find that. Dave's the creator the of that the one. Beard exists. Yeah. Yeah, Dave's nice. uh, Dave's the creator of that page. Yeah. Uh, we I... don't do much with it, but we should because it's a great marketing angle for T-shirts. I don't know why I don't do it, but okay. Yeah, come on. We'll bring I, some, I, some I, point. So tell us about your blacks with you, man. That sounds badass. Well, I, it all started back when I was 15. Um, I was always in true medieval history and other things. Just all history. good stories. Right. And uh, as a kid growing up, I didn't like the modern bows and stuff like that. I didn't like the modern tech. And I found a lot of the old traditional tech was just target stuff. I liked more of the military aspect of it. And the target arrows and stuff, like if I had the time, were made out of lightweight woods. And I would just destroy stuff all the time. So... And this is right when the internet first started really catching on. And so there really wasn't a whole lot of stuff out there. So I started making my own arrows. And then as I progressed, I progressed into blacksmithing. And I started making my own arrowheads. And then it just went all downhill from there. And I was just, <laughs> to, to be good at something like that, you just have to make all your own equipment. You know, I was like, like why, why would I pay for this when I can make something so much better? You're like and, a Ron Swanson. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I've You know been, I can make that. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been fletching for over 10 years. I've been blacksmithing, yeah, roughly since I was 15. So it would be almost 15 years. And now that I'm buying a house and I have a detached um, garage, I'm turning it into a blacksmith shop. I wanted to make it off-grid so I didn't up my uh, costs. So I built it. Um, it's going to have its own solar power generating system for it, and I'm already in the process of building that. And uh, the chimney fund is that's the most expensive thing I have to deal with. Is I have to have to get a, a professional chimney put in. That's going to be expensive as hell. Hmm. Well, I, I the rough quote was about like fifteen hundred for oh. both. I mean, uh, per per chimney, and there's got to be two: one for the wood stove and one for the actual forge. The forge will be expensive hmm. because. It has to be an extra size. It can't be. It's not standard size. It's like 10 inches or something in, in diameter. Uh, because uh, if you don't, you'll die of carbon monoxide poisoning, which would suck. <laughs> so, yep. That yeah. Would suck. Uh, that yeah. Would suck. And it'll be first time in forever since I actually have like an indoor place I can build and machine and work with iron and materials all year round in, in an indoor setting. It's awesome. So you're. Uh, so can we expect like an anarchist Bob Vila type show to pop out uh, from you or something? Only if like I that? can talk like Billy Mays. <laughs> I don't want to talk like Bob Vila. No, no, no. I, th- I think Billy Mays would be a much better sell. Go, go for that one. <laughs> exactly. A Billy so, Mays blacksmith. All right. Yeah. So I'd, like I do, I trade in gold, silver, barter, Bitcoin, all that fun stuff. You know, I, I always tell people I'm always looking for good blacksmith tools. So if you ever find some in a garage, yeah, I'll trade you something for it or a service. I also do really good sharpening services for knives and things like that. Um, I have Japanese whetstones, and uh, I can put a mirror finish on almost any edge you got. I just tell people, you know, don't expect you to take a ten dollar knife from Walmart and make it a razor blade because it's not going to stay sharp very long. You know, that's why I put it kind of as a disclaimer: as sharp as I can get it, because you know, 
I can't. I can get a fifty dollar knife that sharp to stay that way, but I can't get a twenty dollar knife to stay that sharp. <laughs> it's the different steel grades. It really is. And uh, like I got, I've got a few knives, man. You just can't break them. You can do whatever you want with them. You know, I always look at it this way. I want to expand and get into investment casting and metal and casting materials too. Like, because I was looking at all these guys like milling AR-15 lowers, and I'm like, not only could I do that, but why the hell are they buying the blanks? I've got enough scrap aluminum, right? I could just melt it down and make ingots and just stamp the forgings. It wouldn't be that difficult. You know, why Why even, it's like, just skip the whole step. Don't even buy the You don't have to register it. anything. If exactly. you make an entire yeah. firearm, you, you don't have to register anything as long as exactly. you made it 100% yourself. You know, wow. you want to be like Morgan Freeman in the Shawshank Redemption. You'd be like, or at least that's I what I've heard. This. That could be all bull, bull crap. I think there's some states, I think there are some states that actually have laws that make that more difficult. But on the whole, I, I believe, I think even New York, you can get away, well, get away with it. Um, but yeah, it's true. Um <laughs> It's funny you said that though, because I, I have friends that are that are in the the uh, the gunsmithing industry, um, and they, I don't know if they just never thought of it, or for them it was just too much work or out of their wheelhouse. But yeah, everyone I know get, get, buys the buys the lowers and 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 then mills them. Um, so yeah, that that's that's great that you can take just take that step out of the equation too. So I, I don't know anybody else who's doing that stuff. <laughs> well, I do all my own gunsmithing too. I just like to buy cheap surplus guns and take all the suck out of it. You know, people are like, oh, Bows and the Gun's a shit rifle. I'm like, let's try mine out. And they take it on the range and they're like, holy shit, this thing does this. And I'm like, like what'd you do to it? I'm like, oh, I just polished this and I sanded this down and I took the Cosmoline out like this and I did this and they're like, you did all. I'm like, yeah. Well, it took me like maybe three hours and they're like. Can you do it to mine? Like, yeah, you know. But I'll do it for this much bitcoins. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are bitcoins? Like, uh, Google. Yeah. Google Actually, that. You know, it's, it's funny, is I only have a Coinbase wallet because I'm too dumb to figure out how to get uh, a wallet set up for my computer. I, no, 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 no. Get on your phone. Make sure your phone's encrypted. Download Mycelium and transfer all your bitcoins off of Coinbase onto the mycelium wallet because while they're on coinbase you don't actually own the coins coinbase does that's what i figured i only so have like you need, the you need dollars right there is that is that the same thing for blockchain.info yes oh see that's for my name blockchain uh coinbase and circle and oh. there's a few more anything that's a um an exchange and not a wallet a hard wallet. Well, i mean of course they don't have it why do you think it takes you seven days to get it after you purchase it yep yeah the yeah. same thing I switched out of my Coinbase recently, but I, I Dave kept. Part I still buy through Coinbase because all my info is already on on that one. Oh yeah, so buy, yeah, buy and buy and transfer right away. Sure, no problem. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but I've been buying uh, silver more than within Bitcoin lately, mainly because it's still cheap right now. Yeah, supposedly oh, yeah. silver's gonna bounce real hard, but I don't know. The whole world could be. be it's on the verge of uh, collapse if 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 we're supposed to believe Jeff Berwick. I love Jeff Berwick. I want him on the show. <laughs> I'll tell you, as a, as, a, as, a law, as a former Alex Jones nut, I can tell you right now, anyone that thinks they knows when the, the happening's going to happen, they're full of crap. They really are. Because sure. they've been saying the happening's going to happen for 20 years. I'm not saying it won't, because it's oh, a mathematical well. fact. I mean, who was going to predict when Rome was going to collapse, right? You know, like, it's... Well, just, you like, know. Here's, a, here's, like, here's, like, the whole, like, happening Alex Jones movement in a nutshell. The world's going to end tomorrow by gold, silver, guns, and a getaway plan. The next day comes along. Okay, we stopped the globalists somehow. We don't explain how they stopped it. We just, you know, exposed them and nothing happened. But this time it's for real. So get out there and buy some silver and blah. And then it follows the next day. And after like, you know, a couple months of this, you just go, you know. Hey, man, it's the market. I mean, the market <laughs> demands a guy like Alex Jones. He's going to go out there and do it. If no one was listening, I don't, he, he would. I don't, I don't think well, I'll tell you this. I, I don't got, think. I, Oh, I, I got just... a good water filter from this guy. So <laughs> the Berkey. <laughs> oh, the Pro Pure actually. Oh, the Pro Pure. But I didn't buy it through his website. I bought it on Amazon because even though he says he sells it cheaper, he's lying. Yeah, of course. Oh, <laughs> uh, what, what what if that uh, what if that is a CIA water filter and it's gonna kill you if you drink the water out of it? Well, the thing is, I'm not that really important. So if they had to go through all that trouble. I mean, what's the market incentive of them doing that to me? I know. I, know, I, know. I'm just, I was just I playing Alex Jones. <laughs> yeah, I don't I, right. I don't I don't I have a pretty good Alex Jones. <laughs> oh, let's not go there. Um <laughs> I, black SUVs outside my house at night. I gotta call Jesse Ventura. 
<laughs> oh, uh, oh, I was going to say that I, I don't I don't think that there was a I, I don't think there's a market demand for Alex Jones. I think he created the market demand for himself, and he just played on the. He plays on. The, there's some market demand. No, crazy. that's that's not that's not an actual no. That's not, the conspiracy. That world. that's a market demand. The same way what the government forces down your throat is a market demand because they make it a monopoly. No, he 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 he's. He's a better capitalist in a lot of ways than most ANCAPs I know, but he he just, he literally just capitalized on the situation and just picked up the torch from uh, what's his name, Bill Cooper, um, and made it bigger. He went bigger. Mm -hmm. He went bigger and better than William Cooper ever could. And Dave, could you imagine Alex Jones as a, as a used car salesman? <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of how I view him. Um, he, that's what he basically is. He's, he's always try. He's always trying to upsell. Fear. <laughs> I mean, well, he is a, that's he's a fear salesman. That's his that's, job is to sell fear, in my opinion. But of course it that's is. a niche. There are people out there that dwell and love fear. That's their only thing. That they they love being afraid of everything all the time. That's what ha that's one good thing about becoming an anarchist is because like when I was a uh, like a constitutionalist, minarchist, whatever, Alex Jones, nut, I was always paranoid and pissed off at the world. Now. I'm just sitting back and laughing and I just have this kind of told you so mentality. Like, I told you so. This is what happens. I told you so. This is what happens. And they're like, what are you doing about it? I'm like, what are you doing about it? You're making the problem worse. I just want mm -hmm. out of the picture. Yeah, right. right. I don't want to move to Somalia. I just want to be left alone. Yeah, it's it's like those people who say, you know, why are you striving towards a stateless society that's never going to happen? Or even if it does happen, it's not going to happen in your lifetime. So why are you doing this? Right, and I think it's it, it's not about having it even happen in our lifetime. I think it's about living free now. Right, it's, it's like it doesn't matter if it's gonna happen or not. You can live free now and teach your kids to live the same way, regardless if the entire world's gonna you know adopt that. Right, it's just it's just a way to a way to live your life. That's it. Yeah, my friend Nate, um, he uh, I pretty much I think he's gone full end cap. You know, he's not really big into politics, but he's you know he's the kind of person that will listen to your arguments and just kind of take everything in. Yeah. So, you know, he even asked me, he says, well, if you don't think that you'll see this in your lifetime, why do you do it? I said, well, if I was living in the 15th century and I was against slavery and you told me that slavery was never going to end in my lifetime, would, you, would I just start owning slaves? And he's like, so even if it's even if it's an impractical position, if it's the moral right, you'll still believe it? I said, well, yeah, it's better to be right and moral and live in an insane world <laughs> than it is to go along doing insane things just because it, everyone else is doing it. <laughs> Yeah, we don't we don't strive for the popular, uh, you know, we, we don't make this decision for popularity. We make it because it's the moral and virtuous choice, right? That's right. basically I, that's what I always argue from the perspective of morality. You know, forget about forget about like all these uh, hypothetical scenarios. What if you know you're in a dark alleyway and there's no police? It and doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, you know, it's, it's it's we argue for morality, not because we can see the future, right? Yeah, well, well, I I mean I I agree. I mean I normally do too, but. That that particular uh, situation, I can argue the pragmatic um, side of that too. Is sure, I could say, yeah, somebody could walk up to me and tell me, "You're definitely not going to see this in your lifetime." Okay, so if but if I just walk away and say, "Oh, well, I'm not going to see it," whatever. How many other people do that too? And then you're still that much further away from it happening. Like it's it's not going to happen if people like us aren't doing these things. How, how many now. NASA engineers got to go to the moon? You know what I'm saying? It's not about seeing, uh, you know, all your efforts and everything uh, be accomplished. It's doing something that you believe is right and doing what is right. You know? Yeah. Well, I again, like I said, I I I, I agree with you guys on, on the you know that moral argument. Um, but uh, I I think just purely from a pragmatic standpoint, it it kind of has to be done. And it, it, again, I agree. It has, it's not, nothing to do with credit or anything like that. Um, but it's just a matter of if people aren't willing to do stuff right now, then it just takes that much longer for it to happen. Or even worse, the oncoming collapse, which again is, is inevitable. It's just, a, it's a matter of, you know, when, not if. Um, but when that come, when, the, if that comes and there's even less people prepared and thinking like this, then the chances of a, you know, the, a, a more powerful state getting erected immediately increase exponentially <laughs> that's why as many people as possible need to at least understand 
how to engage in just voluntary interactions and exchanges uh, rather than you know g- going to going to some big powerful thing to to get permission to do it because uh, o- otherwise all the other people that are just too scared will immediately clamor and people like us whoever's left at the time or whatever it happens will just get overrun again <laughs> well, I, I mean yeah go ahead go ahead oh, um I, I mean I can argue both pragmatically morally philosophically you know etc but I don't like to get into the pragmatic arguments because that's where all the lifeboat scenarios come from, you know, cause then my roads and my, my schools and, and I'm just like, you know, I'm just done dealing with this. It's like, dude, read an economics book, which you know, they won't, you know, <laughs> I, I, I really think that people are starting to form a divide. You know, there was this guy in this called the, uh, from the cynical libertarian society and He's a character. I would say, you know, he loves to rag on women and feminism, but he, I think he has a valid point where he says you have human beings splitting into two types of people. You have, homo, he says, homo sapien anarchist and homo sapien statist. <laughs> That's and funny. I'm sorry, but I kind of agree that um, a lot of statists out there, I don't mean the people that are on the fence that you can reason with. They're rare, but you can find them. But the people that are hardcore, the ones you could lay all the cards on the table, and they just refuse to accept it because they benefit from that. They're like what Socrates called the natural slaves. They love their chains. They don't. They don't care that they have a gun. They have the gun in the room and get to point it at other people. As long as they get their free meal, they don't care. So yeah. these people. These people. I mean, I've been arguing with these people for years. You know, and some people that are on the fence. You know, I, I try not to to be like a, a a Jehovah Witness anarchist. You know what I mean? It's like. When I was an Alex Jones nut, I used to, you know, spread the message of liberty. But um, number one, it's really annoying for other people to deal with. I have to unfollow those guys on my Facebook, man. It's just nonstop all day. You know, but in the end, he's like, you're not really, you know, nobody convinced me to be an anarchist. I had to convince myself. Yep. Yeah. And and the people either they're either going to figure it out or they're not. And the people, most of the people that, um, you know. You're not going to win every heart and mind out there. And I, I tell people, I'm not here to to make a difference. I'm not here to to free the world or save the world. You know. I, I, I think it's now. Go ahead. I just want to be left alone to do what I want to do. And if people want something from me, then we can exchange value, and I can hang out with other anarchists and drink and be merry. <laughs> you know, I just want out. Yeah, I'm yeah. ready for the Mars colony. <laughs> Get your ass to Mars. Get your ass to Mars. <laughs> awesome. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it, I think it's pretty um, you know, pretty common for when 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 you stumble upon new information that really excites you and and lights you up that you want to share that with people, your friends and your family. You're like, this is awesome. You guys got to read this. You guys listen to this. And then uh, and then they're like putting on the brakes. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait a minute. What are you talking about? Now you're talking crazy, <laughs> because you're so excited about it. And then and then you have to realize, wait a minute. Not everybody is excited excited about this as I am, you know. So maybe I shouldn't, like you said, you know, be a Jehovah Witness <laughs> anarchist. I think I was that in the beginning. And then I realized, yeah, not everybody's as, as excited as, as I am. So why don't I just write articles and you know start a YouTube channel and you know it's like spreading the message. Passively, right? If people want to watch your videos, they watch a video. They want to read your articles, they read your articles. And you know, if I engage in, in conversation with people on the street or you know, when, when I'm out with the kids, so be it. And, <laughs> and I, I got into a nice conversation today. I was at the gymnastics and I was talking to these women about uh, homeschooling, and both of these women were public school teachers. Ooh, both of them. Nice. Oh, and it, it was a very interesting conversation. And, and it's funny because I haven't really had that conversation in a long time. And they, you know, brought up the um, you know the socialization argument, <laughs> all, the, all, the, all the predictable ones, and uh, and what else? Oh yeah, if you want your child to be successful, <laughs> you know, you know, if you want your child to make money, you know, don't you want to be happy? And and uh, and it's kind of funny. I just uh, disentangle. I'm like, how can I say this in the nicest possible way? <laughs> well, my mother's an English school teacher working for a public school, so I know where that's coming from. But the funny thing is, she's so fed up. Yeah, she's either thinking of retiring or going into the private sector. I'm trying to push her towards that. Uh, um, because she's actually been fighting the teachers' unions for years. Like, she was pissed that they just took their contribution money from the labor union and just threw it at Obama. Just like, oh, you're a Democrat? Here you go. And she's not even party affiliated. She was just pissed that she didn't have any consent where her union dues went. 
Yeah. And um, and the union was actually like, you know, trying to get more money from the state. And she's like, I don't care if I have to pay like a hundred bucks for my health care deductible if my kids get freaking textbooks and pencils. <laughs> you know, and and she was and when Comic Core came out, she, oh my god, the look on her face, she was just ranting for hours about um and I said, Well, was the work too hard? She says, No, it's too easy. These kids can learn this stuff. It's too easy for them. They're not challenged, and it's mostly just busy work, you know. Mm-hmm. And the the mess of thing about Comic Core is a lot of it centers around buying proprietary test equipment from these major school corporations that are state backed. Mm-hmm. So it's corporate fascism feeding corporate fascism, and your kids are just being farmed. Uh, just you know, they're not even being educated. They're just being used like like freaking <sighs> farm equipment to create money. Mm-hmm. It is ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> wow. Right, and you know, most not you know, it's funny too because like she's an English teacher, be like, oh, well, she's a public school teacher, she must be that. It's like, no, she hates the system just as much. She's been trying to fight it from the inside <laughs> for years, but yeah. it's getting to the point now where teachers have so little independence and freedom that she can't even do it anymore. No, the teachers are going to get phased out. I was trying to tell my uh, somebody close to me who's a teacher, get out. You're go- they're going to be phased out. It'll be robot teachers. Pretty much. Mm. I mean, I mean, my my mom, my mom was in a similar situation. She had been a teacher for almost like forty years, I think, and uh, she just retired last year. And just like just like you were saying, she, my mom, not only fought the unions, she became the uh, union rep for her school, just so she could get in there and fight it. You know, try to change it from the inside, and she <laughs> she did that for years and. You know, would get like mini successes here and there, but for the most part, they just kept steamrolling and doing whatever they wanted to do. And, you know, she finally retired, but, you know, she had her complaints about Common Core too, but like getting her to recognize that, uh, that, that Common Core was not exactly, it wasn't the problem, it was just the latest symptom that, you know, it wasn't this new thing that that's what was destroying teaching. And, she would at least admit that much that that the fun had been taken out of it for you know for for years before that. Exactly. But she still thought like you know she was still more convinced that this Common Core was now this you know much bigger. I'm like it, it's it's not it's it's all it is is just the next the next thing in line. Yeah. You know before that was what No Child Left Behind. Before that was was something else. <laughs> yeah. I was you know. raised in No Child Left Behind. That sucked. Yeah, but exactly. That's you know, <laughs> and 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 even beyond the Department of Education. I mean, this has been going on since the Prussian school model got brought here in the 1850s or 60s or whatever, 70s, whatever it was. You know, ever since that came here, that's the model has just been to churn out good, obedient citizens. So it's just gotten progressively worse as the benevolent overlords have cr- tried to tinker with it constantly. And just make it worse just about every time. Well, it's like my mother was, even as a school teacher, she always, you know, she's always against regimented stuff because she would treat every student like an individual. Yeah. But you can only do that so much when you're when you're in a regimented system that's running around like a like a machine. Oh, sure. Well, you have to, you have to, oh, I was just going to say, yeah, and, you, and you have like 30-something 30, 30 kids in your class, yeah. you know, and you're yeah, trying right. to handle all of, you know, it's kind of, it's really, it gets really hard to be individualized. Um, to any serious level at that point. For like, for like what, 40, 50, 50 minutes per period, like individualized? Like, how can you do that? <laughs> Impossible. And, and, and it was funny. So she brought up the socialization argument. And, and one thing I said was, um, um, you know, think of all the, the relationships that are voluntary that you cherish in your life. Like, forget about your family. You didn't choose your family, right? Your friends, the one you actually, the ones you actually enjoy hanging out with chatting with because you have things in common, right? You, those are completely voluntary. You weren't forced. When you go to public school, you have no choice. These are kids that are forced to be together, right? Forced association is not socialization. And it's it's so weird that I have to actually say that to people. <laughs> it's like it's like saying rape rape now, is love making. <laughs> are you saying socialization? Are you talking about socialism or are you talking about like kids <laughs> like learning from other kids? Yeah, yeah, like like, yeah, yeah, learning, learning, like street yeah. smarts, that sort of thing? Yeah. Well, as long as you don't homeschool like like, like a crazy like conservative like family that like keeps your kids locked behind closed doors 24/7, they're going to get out there and interact with other kids. Well, sure. Yeah. And the and the other just, Oh, go ahead. I was going to say like we plan and we have kids cuz I'm engaged. We're going to have um 
I just told her, I said, no, either we'll, we'll homeschool or private school. Because I don't want to have to unteach them everything at the end of the day. Yeah, right, right. No, I, I, I totally agree. I mean, my, my girls are four and a half going on five now, and we had that plan laid out. I wasn't even an anarchist at the time. I just, I was, I was so fed up after listening to my mom complain about it for years and then remembering what I went through when I was in school. Uh, I had no interest in ever putting any of my, my children in, in public school. So that that was good. But yeah, you're in a good position. If, if you already figured these things out beforehand, um, it's much better because then you don't have to, like you said, unteach them things, you know, because I, I have plenty of friends that are anarchists and still send their kids to public school for it's usually so it's usually a month like a real uh, money situation or something like that uh, and a time crunch. And they they are aware of what they have to do and they've made concessions and said okay well i'll just do this and it's like well okay but you're giving yourself extra work and you're and you're clutter and you're and you're and you're possibly confusing your child in the process you know Ooh. why s send a you know send a, a kid off to school every day with the message hey johnny now go have a good day at school but remember forget just about everything you learned and when you come back we'll talk about it and we'll explain what's actually right <laughs> right exactly that's, well i mean like if you're good. gonna if you're going to send your kid to a public school, send him to the vote tech or something and have him learn a trade or a valuable oh, yeah. skill. And then, and then skip the rest of that crap well, if you can. If you, if you could, great. But they don't, I think they got rid of those programs here, around here. You know, they, they, it wouldn't they, surprise me. They called them the, the BOCES programs. But they, yeah, uh, yeah, I think yeah. uh, they've, all, they've all fallen off within the last five to ten years because, they, because of funding. Because all the, all the money goes to administration and teachers' pensions. And mm. there. Well, that menial the fac here. factory jobs are are on the decline in the U.S., and that's what those things, what those schools are popping out. No, 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 no. Like crafts and all the like uh, skill jobs and stuff like that are going down. Well, skill, yeah, but okay, but skill jobs and and factory jobs are two totally different things. So wait a minute, I was reacting like to your welding stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I'd have to. You don't have to be that smart to operate factory machinery. Yeah, no, but it wasn't. It wasn't even about that. I was just saying the skills that you're learning there have nothing to do with that. It, it was. It was like you're you no know, more welding and yeah, different tech stuff. Yeah, it's not. Uh, you, I, I believe you're right on that. That they are on the decline, but they shouldn't be, because these are things that are going to be needed. You know, most people don't. They don't think about these things. They just assume that bigger companies can handle this and stuff. No, little stuff like that is always needed, and it would be extremely helpful in a new free society so that's the you know so just like just like what jace is doing with the blacksmith thing like i have i i've, I was, met, yeah. I've, I've met one other one other guy along the way in the past couple of years who, who who really got into it and started doing it too um and i actually have one old friend who's who just picked it up as a hobby years ago um mm -hmm. but again there's not that many people doing it and if you're in these type of communities and you're trying to branch out and try to help you know, make the state obsolete in any way possible. And as we always talk about, you know, one of the best ways to do that is to just try to either you yourself come up with something that rivals the state in some capacity, or if you find somebody else who has something that could rival the state, because like throw money or time or whatever you can at them to try to help them out. Like if we all help each other out in that way and we build these things. So like all these little processes, like blacksmithing, like I said, there's not too many people doing it, but there's, there is still a need for it. There are still things, like you said, you, you found, you're finding ways that you can turn this into, <laughs> you know, making other projects easier, which is even better because those are necessary too. So like, I, I, I think it's great that at any time anybody does stuff like this, I wish more people yeah. would. People think like blacksmithing is like you're just like making like knives or some yeah, simple like things like horseshoes. You, just, just you know, it's like on a sword for it's hour. like no. I mean, <laughs> you can make you can make almost anything: hinges, tools, machinery. I mean, like I'm not talking about complex machinery, but you can, you know, other than the precise machining equipment, it's everything else is there. Yeah. So like you know, I mean, you would not do really you might do you make knives for Bitcoin though? That's the question. Sure. <laughs> well then, set up the website, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to get a forge built first. I mean, I have a tiny little drum forge hanging out in the backyard, but since it like rains like nine out of ten, out of twelve months of the year in Rhode Island, it's a little hard. <laughs> yeah, let's let's help him get his place set up first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we gotta. He's gotta go fund me. So, like, I'm in the process of purchasing this house and and getting it fixed up, and I'm getting married, and so like all my money is just like 
God. So I'm, I'm just like, saying a, a website called Knives for Bitcoin would be a pretty good website. Well, the thing is, I want to build up an inventory first because one thing I've always hated um, with with a lot of other blacksmiths and stuff, I'm not pointing fingers or anything, is I don't like to make stuff for, to order unless it's a custom order because I don't like giving people the four or five week wait time. You know, I want people to, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, you want to get it to them quick. <laughs> um, that and uh, I, I I fill the middle niche. I noticed like two things. Like if you go to like medieval fairs and stuff, you have two ends. You have the crap from China, which is only good for hanging on the wall, <laughs> and then you have the sh- the stuff that costs thousands of dollars that is functional, but it's so damn expensive you'll never ever take it off the wall. You know, mm-hmm. it'd be like using a, a Lamborghini Diablo as your everyday driving car. You'd be too scared to do it because if somebody scratched it, you'd have a heart attack or you'd yeah, cry. Yeah, sure. So I fill the niche market. I try to make affordable, practical things that aren't the prettiest, but they're not bad. You know, they're, they're decent. You know, I make the Toyota Camry of, of iron goods, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, nice. it's cheap enough and, and, and functional enough to be a beater, but it's not so expensive to the point where if you ruined it, you wouldn't be sobbing in the corner going, why? Why did I use this? <laughs> you know? Well, that's perfect. You know? And I also like to do bulk deals because, like, I have sutlers and stuff for reenactors. A sutler is kind of like... Um, Back in the day, uh, armies used to have sutlers travel around with them. They were like the Seven Eleven of their day. They used to carry like extra equipment and everything from canteens to boot laces and toothbrushes and stuff like that. So these guys, you know, when you do reenacting, they do the same thing. They just kind of like they're like a little gift shop. They'll they'll tent up with like anything you need, and they also sell to the general public. So like these guys start calling me up like saying, "I need like fifty tent stakes. I need like a hundred gravity hooks. I need like a thousand nails." And I'm like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa." One thing at a time. <laughs> Just one man. Yeah. <laughs> but well, well, at least you know your product's in demand. I didn't think it was at first. You know, I, I so at first I'm like, well, it's just a hobby. You know, I'll make it for myself and my friends. And then all of a sudden, like one day, I was doing a reenactment where I, they're like, well, why don't you do a blacksmith setup? And I'm like, all right, well, I got to go home and get the anvil, but I don't have a portable forge. So one guy's like, hang on. So the owner of the property comes back. You know what he brought for me to use? A rivet forge that was used to build the Empire State Building. Whoa. Wow. He says, That's pretty cool. said, take good care of it, but it, it, it thing was over 100 years old and it still worked. Wow. <laughs> and I got to play with that. I spent all weekend building tent stakes because I didn't have any, and like 30 people asked for them. So I'm literally just bending over pieces of metal all weekend. <laughs> That's Yo, what were you charging for tent stakes? <laughs> like four, 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 five bucks. That's you know, if they cool. bought more, if they bought a set of them, I knocked a couple bucks off. You know, most of the money goes into the is goes into the cost of material. Sure. Um, you know, like like Dave always says, labor's meaningless. You know, that's that's the problem I see with another a lot of blacksmiths. I'm a craftsman, not an artist. You know, a craftsman makes something practical, an artist makes something that looks pretty and might be practical. Yeah. And uh, that's that's the problem. Like when people forge, you know, they'll they'll work a hundred hours on something, and they'll sell it for like two thousand dollars, and they'll be like, "Why can't I sell this?" I'm like, "Cause you're pricing yourself out of the market, bro. <laughs> you don't need to make you don't need to make like the world's greatest sword and sell it for two thousand dollars. If you make something that's like you know the the Kia of swords, you know, <laughs> it's very basic." But it's functional and it's sell cool. it for two hundred bucks. You'll... Right. Yeah. I mean, perfect example. Like I learned this economic lesson not only through my my family business, which isn't blacksmithing, it's something entirely different. Um, but there was a story that I listened to from my my local rental place. They rent power tools, and there's a father that owns one store and the son that owns the other. Well, the father they both sold weed whackers in the store. The father was selling them for like five to ten dollars over cost. Over 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 uh, wholesale, the son was selling for full retail. Now the son walks over one day and he says to his old man, he says, "You're dumb. You're losing so much money. Yada yada yada. You know." He says, "I'm charging full price on mine." And the old man looks to his son. He says, "Yeah, but how many did you sell?" He said, "I sold maybe a couple of them." He says, "I can't keep them on the shelves here." <laughs> he made more money in volume of sales in the same period of time than his son did making one or two sales, and that's the way I like to do business. Walmart makes point zero two cents on every dollar. That's how much they net. Hmm. 
And yeah. you make more people happy that way, though, because people are always looking for good prices. Yeah, well, yeah, well, exactly. Walmart makes that, but when you're bringing in that many dollars, it's a heck of a lot. But no, I know. It's just, you know, though, there's, there's the, I mean, I know they're an evil company, but when you hear of their profit, <laughs> it's just like, wait. Well, Two yeah. Two cents on every dollar? Or no, and, no, yeah, it's way less than that. And that'll blow, that'll blow most people's minds because they don't, they don't understand the economic lesson that Jason was just talking about, about recognizing that the whole, you know, the whole volume thing. Cause most mm -hmm. people, most people are, are so economically, you know, I, I think, I, I mean, at some point in my life, I definitely was, um, and maybe even closer to us, uh, me finally becoming an anarchist. I was still pretty economically illiterate. Um, it was only starting my, it was starting my business that I started to learn more things. But before that, I probably wouldn't have known that, but most people don't either. They just, they think, oh, you can sell, you know, you sell it for this much. Um, okay, great. Then as long as they see sales going in, they think that's a good thing. And they, you know, they don't take into consideration what the other person's pumping out. And you would actually have to show them to go, oh no, yeah, he sold five of them at that price, but this guy sold 20 of them. And now he actually has more money to go home with. Oh. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, your, yeah, your, yeah. your labor is only as good as what people are willing to pay for. Well, right? Exactly. All right. Actually, uh, that brings up a good point is, is that, um, I don't know, talk about greedy corporations. Uh, <laughs> Verizon is enduring a strike recently. You guys uh, have noticed this? No? I just saw. Uh, yeah, right down my street. Actually, I, I don't know if it's one. just. Okay, so it's in Rhode Island too. Okay, so yeah, I definitely noticed it around here, and uh, and I got into a very slightly heated conversation with one of my socialist family members. <laughs> <laughs> one of them. And uh, when are you going to start recording these? Uh, they're just so spur of the moment, you know, and uh, and it was funny. You and, got a and phone, I was... right? Come on. <laughs> Grab a phone, press record, and say... Bamboozer. Just, bam get, just get a chest cam or whatever they Seriously? call Yeah, things. bamboozer. Even yeah. Bamboozer. Or the, or the, or the, or the cell oh, Just go live on Facebook. <laughs> oh, that'd you, know be, what I noticed, you know what I noticed about the cell 411? There's, a, there's a, uh, um, a function that you can turn on a fake delete button so that if, if the person takes your phone and tries to delete the video... Like it automatically takes a picture of the person, and like saves it somewhere. <laughs> like that's that's such an awesome idea. <laughs> I just realized that. But anyway, yeah, yeah. So Verizon, yeah, around me. I don't know how, how many stores, but uh, yeah, definitely in New York. And um, and <laughs> I told this family member, I told her that uh, as I was driving by, I gave them a sneer. I'm like, get back to work. <laughs> get get some more skills if you want more money. <laughs> stop. <laughs> Stop demanding. Stop. Stop thinking that you're entitled to something that you're not. Right. I'd be more stop sympathetic if stop, they didn't stop. knock on my door every time, or, or go to Walmart and just start heckling oh. me. I'm like, I already had bios. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> and I hate your service. Or like every once in a while they'd be like, Oh, well, how do you like the service? I'm like, Let's see. It's overpriced. I have buffering issues, and your wireless internet sucks. So yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually just got rid of them last year, and I'm glad I did because I, I just heard about the Verizon thing today only because I, I have a friend who, who moved down to Florida who uh, used to work. He worked for Verizon for years, so he was posting stuff about it today. You know, you know memes like, you know, uh, Verizon based memes, you know, in solidarity with the, you know, whoever is yeah. actually striking. I'm like, oh, man, like, I didn't even look into it. I'm like, why are they striking? So, so what is, what's the deal? They want more money? Why do they? Yeah, they yeah, more no, no, pay? yeah, yeah. They're no, wearing no, shirts, no, like. They're well, striking well. because of uh, there's no tr uh, tranny bathrooms in, in the no. in the Verizon oh, stores. There's no bidets. No, no. So the, <laughs> they uh, yeah they have these shirts, greedy corporation. And, you know they're making billions and you know higher pay and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and 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 my family member has a business. He's a business owner, right? So I'm like, imagine if all of your employees go on strike and say we demand a hundred dollars per hour. What would you do? Completely evaded the question. Did not answer. Oh, who right. really wouldn't even answer it? No, would not even answer it. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, what would you do? Say again. I was, technically, I own like um, I fix appliances for a living. It was my father's business, and I took it over when he passed away. And that's what I tell these people too with the corporations, like, oh, greedy corporations. I'm like, you know, they made a billion dollars in profits. I'm like, okay. So let's factor in the cost of doing business. Huh? Let's do a Google search right on my phone. We'll figure out how much they spent before we figure out how much they actually take home. Because when you do, and it's like, yes, the guys at the top make more money. But at the same time, the guys at the top are the ones that took all the risks and all that stuff to provide you with a job in the first place. Well, and also think about how many unemployed AT&T and Sprint and all these other workers there are that it, Verizon could lay all these people off and, and have basically an entire trained 
Oh, they, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they, 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 yeah, they're easily replaceable right now because Verizon has kind of put. You're right. Verizon, Verizon's pushed a lot of the. Okay, um, you're all companies. fired. <laughs> I'll just hire all of Charters or whoever's last r- round of firings went through. <laughs> That, and I mean, like, everything's so automated these days, it wouldn't surprise me if they just, like, the only people you'll see working for Verizon in, like, 10 years will be people that are just running door-to-door being, hey, you want to buy this service? It's like, no. <laughs> well, they don't even have to do that anymore because they just call you all the time or send you emails or they still send snail mail. Uh, they find ways. I, I well, hate, I hate, I, what's going to be the spam of the future, though, guys? Memes. The spam of the future is going to be like um, memes. It's going to be through Netflix, and what they're going to do is they'll to get it like it's like YouTube Red. That's going to be the future of spam. They're going to give you a quote free service, even though you're already paying for it one way or another, and then they're going to make you watch like ten minutes of freaking commercials. <laughs> You know, and oh I, uh, if you watch Netflix, if you watch, there's a show that they just put out called The Ranch, and it's got. Ashton Kutcher and Danny Masterson and Sam Elliott in it. And it's a really, really funny show, or at least I thought it was funny. Uh, screw off if you didn't like it. Um, <laughs> but there, there, you know, since there's no commercials on Netflix, there is mad product placement. Mad. Like every bottle of whiskey they're drinking is like right in mm. front of the camera, label showing. <laughs> wow. they're, they're like, "Hey, are we going to Taco Bell to eat? Because I love the Chalupa Supreme." And it's like <laughs> you're just like, yeah, it's like that's how the that's the future of advertising. Well, that's, injecting it into that, the would, that wouldn't be so bad though. I mean, you because you can work at Taco Bell. It wasn't right? bad, and it's it so much more bad. subliminal. Well, it's, so much, it's, it's into subliminal sublimination and you know semantics and everything. It, I loved it. As long as it's, <laughs> as long as it's not overdone, then yeah, that's def- that's definitely a, a much better way to go. At least, especially in the mind of the average person who has the short attention span, and you know, I mean, I, I'm somebody too. I I, I I hate watching TV with commercials. Uh, I got rid of cable, so I don't have to do that that much. And the shows that I watch are all. Either Amazon Prime shows now, or the or a couple ones that I get torrents for, so I don't have to worry about commercials. But yeah, I, I could totally see that that it would just be product placement makes a, a heck of a lot more sense. Well, than, here's what happens when commercials get turned on nowadays, right? You have this little thing in your hand, the commercial comes on the TV, and it's like, oh, <laughs> oh, my show's back on. <laughs> yeah. So they're they're figuring that out, and you know. Yeah, who watches? It has to figure it out soon because, like, it's like, and it's even with like a lot of these blogs. They get, I guess, they get light, they get paid per click, and I, it's like, um, my stepmother and uh, I both noticed that if it's if it's like a page that says something like really outrageous, like look what these people are doing in Greece, and you go to click on it, and you have to click through like ten pages with like one picture and like a paragraph, or if yep. you don't even look at it anymore, it's like no, and then it's flooded with ads. Or you know what aggravates me? I mean, like. Um, even even like libertarian websites like uh, like Jeffrey Tucker's website and um, Chris Cantwell back when I before he totally ostracized me. Um, <laughs> he ostracized uh, you. He yes, ostracized yeah. himself. Um, I was defending something like when he was going all like on his Trump tirade, and he you know and I tried reasoning with him and he's just like oh f off you you cuck you this you that and I was just, I mean I'm like dude. I'm a I'm a subscriber. I pay you like thirty dollars a month yeah. just to support you. Wow. I know it's not a lot of money, but it's more than what he was asking for, you know. And he was just being a total dick to me. And I'm like, okay, you you know, you talk about the market. This is you ex, ex you know, this is the market walking out the door. I'm taking my money elsewhere. Yeah. You know, he lost a lot of subscribers that day, and it was so funny too because like six other people joined in. It's like, dude, why don't you just answer his questions? He's like not being a he's not being a dick. Well, Cognitive dissonance is a hell of a drug. Well, I'm, I'm sure he was on the defensive <laughs> today because everybody. Oh, he thinks it's totally black and white. He thinks either you're a leftist or you know, or you're not. And I'm like, no, it's a little different than that. Like, he thought just because I'm I'm involved with people that are polyamorous that oh, you must be like one of those weird guys that does all this. And I was like, no, I'm actually pretty conservative by those standards. <laughs> you know, you can have like. Go ahead. No, I'm like super old fashioned guy. Like I'm a one girl kind of guy, and uh, I, I, you know, however people want to do it, or you know, my friends want to do things, whatever. Just, you know, I, just because you associate yeah. with someone, you know, it's like whatever. Like, like you know, it's like if I have my lifestyle, I don't push it on anybody. You know, like like that poly chick that he had on his show for a while. Like 
who was a total idiot. I'm like, being promiscuous and a young, stupid teen doesn't make you polyamorous. It just makes you a skank. <laughs> you know? There's today's and lesson like, for you, kids. <laughs> <laughs> so are we gonna are we gonna talk about the the, the bathroom tr- uh, Tennessee oh, oh. law? So here's here's my general assessment on the whole thing. Okay. Oh. Uh, the people who want transgender bathrooms should fuck off, and the people who don't want <laughs> transgender bathrooms should fuck off. And we should all let the market decide it, okay, friends and families? Because <laughs> if, like, KFC is losing business because they don't have a transgender bathroom, they're going to slap a motherfucking trans- transgender bathroom in there. It's that simple, okay? I don't understand why this is a debate or a thing or whatever. It's what? so silly and nonsensical. Oh, oh. Well, it's a debate. <laughs> well, we should do it. Okay. Well, I was just going to say it's a debate or a thing because people, number one, need something to argue about. Number two, they are looking to government to solve what they believe is a problem on both sides. Because, like I said, the, the story, one of the stories I came up, I guess, is the Tennessee bill that just recently went through or or they're trying to push through it in the past couple of days religious protection yeah yeah the religious protection where they're trying to block uh transgender bathrooms from being in certain places on religious grounds which again you i mean what you said about the market forces of course is correct because that's that's all it would really take and that you know if people wish to have a transgender bathroom great if they don't great because again that's just Beyond uh, re- uh, religious uh, freedom, it's just the freedom of association, which we talk about all the time. You know, you know the, the, the and free- I think Dave Champion's way off on this thing, and, and I, I don't know why he, he keeps making – I really I don't understand why he can't grasp this I, one. I love Dave Champion, man. He's a great guy. I just don't understand why he can't get this freedom of association that's thing. That's why he wanted to talk about this. Um, I, I honestly, no, no, you came up with that, no, right? No, well, I, I, I don't know about the, I, I don't, I don't know his position on this. I didn't actually see what he was saying about this in particular. I know what he said about the whole cake thing and that in general and discrimination. He's against discrimination. I'm not saying anything about the transition. Tran- I mean, he did do a video about the transgender bathroom. No, I, 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 I didn't really watch it. No, that, that's what I'm saying. I, I didn't either. I, all I know is that I know his position on discrimination. You're right. He's been very weird about this because. We're apparently just horrible bigots, even though I don't think I've ever said whether I would put a transgender bathroom in my place or not, or whether I would bake a cake for somebody or not. But I'm just automatically a bigot because I'm defending other people's. Bigot right. is not an argument. Well, <laughs> I, I know, but that's what. He and comes. he should know that. Mm-hmm. That's what makes me ups- he's not, upset about the whole thing. He's not an anarchist, Dave. I tried well, to tell. I tried to tell you this when he when you first brought him to me. Something about him seemed off, and now I found it. He's not an anarchist. Well, maybe we'll just have to keep working on it. He's a little, he's a, <laughs> is, he, is he a libertarian? Uh, he's a almost there atarian. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, because he, he still talks about the Constitution an awful lot. But the but the whole the whole thing with the transgender bathroom and just in general again is just I, you're right. Why why does anybody need to do this other than they expect government to fix the problem? The, just want yeah, to me, to well, me, so go ahead. Daniel. I was gonna say to me it's like um, you know. People had a problem with forced segregation, and then the government said, okay, we're going to do forced integration. <laughs> so anything the government does is force people. They force only know how to solve things with violence. <laughs> forced transgender bathroom by or, law. <laughs> well, exactly. Or, or un- <laughs> in you know, force. Penalties will arise. Yeah, or you know in- what's going to happen with like 90% of transgender bathrooms? The employees are going to end up using them because it's going to be the only clean bathroom in the joint. <laughs> Either that, or they're just gonna take the signs off and just put restroom on it and just make them unisex bathrooms. That'd well, be the cheapest way. Yeah, that's way what to they should it. do. We'll yeah. see. Actually, yeah. I, I mean, like, that's what, what they the do. For, that's what they did in San Francisco, I think. What would the signs for a transgender bathroom look like? Would it be like a dress with a penis still, sticking out of it or they something? All, they already have it. It's called a family bathroom, right? Well, yeah, but <laughs> see, actually, but see, but see, here, here again, <laughs> we're we're talking about market forces and stuff. A brand new business who want who wants to you know who uh, who's building a, a restaurant or a store or whatever, but he's going to put whatever it is. There's going to be a bathroom for the public. Why are they going to want to spend the money on two separate bathrooms when they can say, "Hey, I'm going to conform with this law that may or might not even be here right now." But hey, I'm going to do this, and all of a sudden now they're saving money by making one one or two gigantic bathrooms versus two or four or whatever you know smaller bathrooms, and boom, there you go. 
So it's it's a win for business, which I'm sure these people that are screaming for equality are not taking into consideration. Because how much how much is it going to piss them off when they realize that some of the big bad corporations can save money because of what they've done? You know, that's just the un that's just one of the millions of unintended consequences of using government action instead of finding voluntary means yeah. and yeah, letting that, the market the, decide. Oh, you that, ladies like your that, nice that, clean bathroom? Wait till all of us guys get in there. <laughs> Yeah, that's, I that's worked. Whole, I worked at rest. I worked in restaurants, and trust me. Go ahead. Female, ba uh, female bathrooms are definitely not cleaner. Thank you, thank you. I was gonna say I've been. Yeah, I've been on those trust jobs me, too. Yes, they, they are, are the just most as bad. disgusting things. <laughs> I seriously, I've worked. I've been in some men's bathrooms where I would like. I wouldn't even. <laughs> okay. I would even hell fire. Would you, would you see like people smear period blood on the mirror and tampons like clogging the toilets? Uh, and oh, yes. <laughs> I've seen poop way. smeared on the walls. Yeah. See, I I'll, I'll put. I, I mean, he he. Jason, I think, has even more experience than I do. But for the limited experience I have in this, I would put a guy's bathroom at a bar at like three a.m. and most women's bathrooms in any public place any time of day somewhere women probably still might tip the scales on a lot of day on a, on a good day but yeah <laughs> dude they're, they're they're gross and i and there there are there are friends of female friends of mine who are honest enough to say yeah it's, it's nasty as hell <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure yeah you'll probably talk if you talk to some of your lady friends they'll probably be like oh yeah if i get a chance i'll sneak into the men's bathroom any oh, yeah. chance i get yeah you get, might miss the bowl but women like miss the whole freaking like it's like how it's Oh. How? Yeah. yeah. And you know what's you know you want to speak about sexism? Guess who got stuck cleaning the women's room more than the women? This guy. Well, of course. Nice. <laughs> well, because they so don't. You want... say we... you say women weren't fighting to get your job? <laughs> is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, that's that's why that's why feminism, the wage gap, Not all this stuff is, is such garbage because they don't they only want certain jobs. They don't right. want all the jobs to be equal. Yeah, they say, well, why aren't women in the trades? I'm like, because A, they don't want to, and B, they don't want to put the effort into it. I'm like, I actually know. I, I, I've heard in my circle that there is a female technician floating around my state somewhere for a company because I hear customers talk about her. Oh, she's not. She's like Loch Ness. You've never actually seen her. Nothing in the area that I service. Yeah. <laughs> But it's like it takes a year and a half to apprentice someone like me to do this job. And you have to be technically savvy and you have to be able to reverse engineer things to at least to be good at your job. You know, you could be a parts changer like the idiots that work for the larger companies. But, um, you know, it's like you have some mechanics that just change parts and you have some of them that understand how an internal combustion engine works. You want to get the guy that knows how, to, how an internal combustion engine works because he can fix any car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a there's 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 guys who know how to fix computers, and then there's guys that know how to fix computers. <laughs> well, yeah. If you know what I mean. Well, yeah, there's people that could do the physical labor, and then there's some people that could do the physical labor, the the programming, do everything, build it for like literally build stuff from scratch, and make it do and make it do really cool things. Yeah, <laughs> that's not me. <laughs> I can phys <laughs> I can physically build them from scratch and do minor programming, maybe. Yeah, I'm in the same boat when it comes to like heavy software issues. That's one of the reasons like I never, I was like always in the thing with the podcast. I'd like to do a podcast because I need an outlet so I can stop scaring the crap out of my family. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but um, I'd rather, I'd rather like do like a blacksmithing podcast and just have some dude with a camera and just have me rant while I'm playing with metal and just, and do something like that and then just post it on someone else's channel, then make a whole new channel and edit it. And that's yeah. editing. It's the one thing I can't stand doing. Like I, I have a dash cam for Rhode Island drivers, and I used to just record all the stupid shit I see every day because nobody believed me because I'm on the road all the time. Yeah. And I posted two or three videos, and people were just like, oh, it's not that bad. I'm like, watch this video, this video, this video. And they go, oh, my God, how do you even make it to, from point A to point B? And I'm like, I have eyes in the back of my head. <laughs> that's how I do it. See, that's actually, oh, man. That's actually pretty funny. I, I should think about doing that because I'm on the road all day here on Long Island and I run into Dude, idiot go to Walmart. You day. can get a dash cam for 45 bucks, spend an extra 20 bucks and get a 16 gig micro SD card. And it, it, and these days, it's better to cover your rear end because somebody and some of these things nowadays, you like if a car bumps into your front, as long as it's in view of the camera, they have sensors in them. Hmm. If they sense a heavy shock, they automatically record anyways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? 
Yeah, you know, I I've, I've been meaning to get one for those other purposes. Um, well, actually, for actually, I've been. You mean the uh, you mean the road pirate in yes, interactions? That's actually. Oh, oh my yeah. god! I, I just never, <laughs> I never got around to it, but now now I can see the benefit. It, I tell you, one. it had saved my rear end. I I got stopped in Massachusetts. It was one of those podunk towns, and this cop tried to tell me I ran a stop sign, which I don't. That's one thing I don't do is I don't run red lights and I don't run stop signs, contrary to most New Englanders. <laughs> and. Mm-hmm. The cop, and I know he couldn't have seen me do it because he was out of my view, and I look in my rearview mirror like every three seconds. And he would, if he did, if he was in my view, he would have been like 600 yards away, so he couldn't be able to see that anyways. So, you know, and he's like, "Oh, well, you know, you ran a stop sign." I said, "No, I didn't." Would you like to see the dash cam footage? And his attitude just changed immediately. Wow, <laughs> nice. You know, it's like you know, then he became kind of friendly. You know, it wasn't like rude, really obnoxious or rude, but you know, he was fishing. Oh, sure. And when he found out that uh, I just cut the hook, you know, he just let mm. me go. Well, no, that's Would you like to see the footage? <laughs> well, nice. That's exactly why it is handy. Um, you know, and I, like I said, I, I've wanted to do it for that. but, but And I, I always justified not doing it by, like, putting it to, like, back on the priority list by saying, oh, I have other recording device. Like, I always carry two, at least two recording devices on me at all times anyway. Yeah, but you got to turn it on. You have to, you know, what like, your phone. Oh, no. Battery life. Well, oh, no, exactly. So, like, that's why. But I kept justifying it by saying, "Oh, I have these other things, and I don't deal with them that often." But now, with this other idea, now I would have a reason to use it all the time. <laughs> so, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go relook into uh, purchasing one very soon. With as soon as some funds become available, and uh, I may do I may start just, doing that. That'll, there are, that'll be just interesting. Be careful. Because there are some knockoff cameras that are exactly the same model, but they're made in China, and they're like an inferior copy. So just do some homework no, before I, you I, buy. Yeah, I, I try. I try to do so. You know, like I, I tried to buy one that had a rear view camera, which I really wanted, and um, it turned out to be absolute crap compared to my. And the funny thing was, it was twice the price of the one I bought at Walmart, uh... and it was inferior quality. But thankfully, thanks to the free market with Amazon, within two seconds, I printed that return label and sent it right back. Yep. No uh... questions asked. Yep. No, no, that's, that, that is, that, that's, it's funny. That's actually where I order most of my stuff from too. Cause I actually have clients who pay me in Amazon gift cards. Um, so, so we were going to do the Panama, we're going to talk about the Panama papers, but I don't know if that's such a big topic. I don't yeah, know if we'll be able to, I don't think we'll, I don't think we'll deal with that tonight. <laughs> I, I, the only thing I'll say about the Panama papers is, is this, and I'll, I'll keep it short. It's very suspicious that no U.S. politicians or U.S. interests were really Bam, like way, way at the top of this list of findings. But I did read somewhere that the data is so massive that they're still looking through it. Oh, no. They, like, it's, it's yeah. citation needed. <laughs> well, they, it's they, like monstrous. No, they, they are. And they, and the, the organization, oh, I, I guess we'll talk about it a little bit then. The, or, the organization <laughs> that is, that, because I do know that I do know some of this information. Um, the organization, uh, the, uh, I think it's the ICIJ. Yeah. The International Consortium of Independent Journalists. Uh, is like 200 journalists or something like that, but they have said that they, you know, this is only like two to five percent of the information that they've actually released, and they're going to keep releasing little bits of it at a time. But they've already stated they're not going to release everything. But I, I had the same concerns that, well, I, concerns really isn't the right word, but that you that you mentioned, Dave, that yeah, it's it's very interesting that no U.S. interest for the most part. I mean, because all they, Putin. Well, no, no, David Cameron was implicated. Um, the, uh, what's that's the name, right? The prime minister of uh, the UK. Um, I believe the president or prime minister, whatever it is of Iceland, the one who suppo- who everybody supposed, you know, the people supposedly champion about the fact that they threw out the bankers and stuff. He's actually on the list as suppo- supposedly he already resigned. Yeah. Because he was working with the bankers that he was supposedly helping throw out of the country. <laughs> I love it. So... I love it. <laughs> but but see, that, they're it. right there. And, you know, some people will call him a coward or whatever. But you know what? That's like the most honorable thing I think any of them could do in that position. I'm busted. What am I? You, don't, don't even wait. Don't even try to explain it away. Just be like, I'm out. <laughs> I, I I wish that's what more of them would do. Exactly. Just, that's what I'm saying. It would yeah, be so yeah, much call better. Me red-handed. I'm out because like if if they <laughs> fight it, then they're gonna. There's gonna be. I mean, obviously, if it's atrocious, they're gonna get taken to court anyways. But. You know, yeah. like if they call him yeah, doing some stuff court. that's quasi illegal, legal, whatever, it's in this weird gray area, yep. and he's just like, "I'm out." Yep. I'm sure he's just trying to save his ass of because course. he probably knows more shit's coming, and he wants to get out. Yes, yeah, hmm. like I said, smart guy. Um, but yeah, so that that's what it is. So that just like uh, the Guardian with the Edward Snowden leaks, like they kept letting stuff out a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. 
that's what this group apparently is going to do with this information. Um, so there may be other names that come out, uh, obviously. But it does seem very weird that when you're talking about all these you know, rich and powerful people all, all around the world who are using these offshore banks for you know, what, the, what, what the state calls tax evasion, what we call theft evasion. Um, so I, I don't actually fault these people for doing it, although when it's government officials who are bilking their citizenry for this money and then use and then transferring the money that they get from being in that position and avoiding it that's kind of messed up um, but anybody else like the, you know rich rich people it's just who do evil. it rich people who do it i don't you know whatever i don't blame them for for trying to avoid having their money stolen by the state in the first place uh, but it's just, unless it they're using the state to get that money well yeah no exactly if it's if it's one of the bigger corporations that have you know that the, who are on that list too that are heavily subsidized and are basically in bed with the with the fascistic state, then yeah, absolutely, they uh, they should fry for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the principle in general, like, because this, unfortunately, this is what's going to happen. They will, you know, you know what's going to happen. The, the the in the U.S. at least, they will spin. Um, even if some even if some people do eventually get implicated, they will spin this that oh we can clean up this and we need to get rid of this. You know, we need to get, we need to crack down on these offshore banks and we need to, we need more laws, more regulations, more, more, more. And everybody will clamor for it, not realizing that it's not just the small percentage of super rich people that they. And then you know what goes up? Cryptocurrencies. Well, yeah, it'll benefit in the short term. It may benefit people like <laughs> us who are already involved, hopefully. But in, in general, it's, it's going to be a shock for a lot of people when that happens. So. I don't know. Like I said, I, I think I, I think it's weird that they, they didn't. There's no U.S. people because for me that just lends credence to the fact that it could have been the C. Well, not the fact, but the the possibility of the CIA or some or, or other organization within the U.S. government being the one helping with this leak. Well, who could bury anybody but the CIA? Yeah, pretty much. Well, they're behind most of it, anyways. I mean, that goes without saying. Even even the border patrol, people are like, I don't understand why they're doing this border patrol like 50 miles inland. I'm like, I'll tell you why they're doing it. It's a facade. What they do is they'll bust your chops for having a pineapple or a, or a donut that was made in Mexico. And then what they do is they shut it down for two or three hours, and all these big trucks go by full of drugs and guns and money and everything, and they turn a blind eye and a deaf ear to it. <laughs> it's it's all a facade to make it seem like they're doing the right thing and being secure when they're really just continuing their own criminal Ponzi scheme <laughs> at everyone else's expense. Yeah. And this whole thing sounds like a, a dog and pony show to be like, oh yeah, you know, tax evaders, terrorism, yep. oh, and, and what they're going to mm. do is those companies like mine that could, in theory, yeah. like I don't have a lot of money, but if I was like a corporation – a large corporation and I wanted to take some of my money out of the country, they're going to like clamp down on me. Yep. Meanwhile, the guys that are connected to the CIA or whatever like that, they're they're not going to be restricted at all. They're just going to either change the names or, or do a political song and dance and get through the cracks anyways. That's how it always goes. You know, I mean, it's, it's like you can't police the police with police. It doesn't work that way. Nope. <laughs> you know, they'd be like, I, we investigated ourselves and found us innocent of any wrongdoing. <laughs> the dog doesn't bite the hand that feeds it, my friends. Even worse than that, it's because it's, it's not even it's the, they're not even being fed. They're just watching each other's backs. Everybody, the watchers are watching the watchers. The watchers. The, watchers. The, yeah, the uh, we should just look into um, who makes up this uh, international journal thing. Like, if you see Buzzfeed in there, we know we're screwed, and it's not anything credible. <laughs> well, I, I, I've heard. I mean, I from what I've read into it, I, I've heard Soros is connected, which is just a joke because he's nothing. He's not. He's not independent. His organizations are not independent in the least. You know, he does, he does what media matters and stuff and junk like that. That's just like pure propaganda for whatever side. He's more leftist. Socialist so. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Aruminati! Which, I mean, there, there's plenty of Supposedly stuff. Supposedly, he's just a socialist globalist, you know. Yeah. And that's the mega most, billionaire. The globalist thing is the, is the most often, uh, is the thing I hear most often about him. Yeah. Uh, but they, they're, you know, there's just as many horrible ones on the right, too. So that, I'm not even saying that it's just those people, but. For as far as I would, I would like to know how much the how much how evil the normal person would be with George Soros sources money. You know, he's just a normal dude. He's just got a lot of money. That's the only that's the only difference. Most people with a lot of money like him would just buy stupid shit with it. That's what yeah, I think they would do. Yeah, because he's got he's got a lot of money, but 
he's got like Bill Gates money, and Bill Gates does some weird and, and kind of messed up stuff, but he's not. He doesn't seem to be as nasty as Soros is, um, or at least on paper, I guess. <laughs> um, he has better know, PR, I know. guess. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. So, um, but yeah, I, I, it, is it possible that that much money and essential and and subsequent power could change anybody? Sure. Um, I don't know. I don't know who amongst us. Well, definitely not amongst right. us. But, but well, in general, in who is pure enough yeah. to have that to have right. that not affect them in any way? But I, I don't think it's ne- necessary. That would be a done deal for everybody, basically. Well, the only thing that keeps it perpetuating with somebody who became like psychotic or sociopathic with that much money would be a state. Without a state, somebody would get his money somehow. You know, pull him pull him down from the market. Competition would either root him out, or if he tried to do something crazy like you know march tanks on Ankapistan. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry redneck with a with a gun and an attitude is just going to be like, yeah, nope, we're not having this anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll see. Right. So, uh, so Jace. Uh, so before we go, can you? Um, we always like to ask our guests for your favorite quote of all time. So many good quotes. I like a lot of. I like a lot of stuff from Spooner. <laughs> all right. Um, no, no man, no man is any less a slave because he gets to choose a master in a term of years. That's one of my favorite quotes. Uh, that was one of my first quotes I ever heard uh, from Spooner. My man, Spooner. My man. <laughs> yeah, I, heard, I just heard a uh, Dangerous History podcast uh, that he did on uh, on Spooner. Pretty cool. Ooh, ooh. I, think, I think it's like the, his first uh, DHP Heroes yep. episode was on Spooner, right? Yep. Episode okay. twenty-five. So. Yep. Uh, so yeah, so so before we go, also please uh, plug your, uh, you know, how, how people can reach you, if they want to follow you or. Like um, you. If you have any questions about metal work or blacksmithing or agro stuff, if you guys need me to make something, fix something, whatever, uh, you can check out on Facebook Red Fox Armory Blacksmith Shop, and uh, we have a GoFundMe for the chimney, uh, so we can get that thing up and running. Um, it's still a work in progress. Uh, it's just uh, the main reason I decided to do a GoFundMe was because. I uh, am running out of funds because I'm tied up in so many other projects, and I've been putting it off for two years, and I'm like, I need to shit or get off the pot with this project and get it off the ground and get it going, because I feel like if I don't do it now, it's never going to happen. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, yeah, sometimes that's all you need to get that fire lit under you, so there you go. Put the, put the pressure on yourself. you got to do it now. Do it now. <laughs> yeah. I hate procrastinating. I'm always been the kind of person to nip it in the butt. Well, I'm the opposite. <laughs> yep. Yes, you are. <laughs> I, 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 uh, Is that how the beard started? You just kept forgetting to buy a razor? <laughs> yeah, I'll shave it next week. I'll shave um, I'm gonna, uh, I'm my, ball, my, ball, my boss, <laughs> my old mall, boss used to call me the most efficient procrastinator he's ever met. Nice. <laughs> he's like, it looks like you do nothing, but everything gets done. I don't understand it. <laughs> so what you do is you get everything done and then you pretend to procrastinate. So, <laughs> so uh, my methods are my methods. I'll, I'll keep them hush. <laughs> <laughs> but also, also it's, conversation. It's really the beard that does the work. That's what it is. The beard is self-aware. Well, I have gnomes. Just, just tons he of just, gnomes. He, just hide, he hides his tools. You know, so don't know how many tools he has. Do all the work for me. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what, that. this is where my deficient Photoshop skills come in because now I now I need a meme with little gnomes popping out of Dave's beard, but they'll all have Dave, <laughs> they'll, they'll all have Dave they'll all be miniature Daves. They'll be little they'll be little nice. elf bodies with little miniature Dave's faces with with beards on them. Make so, sure they have the pointy hats. You gotta have the pointy hats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If they don't have pointy hats, don't even do it. <laughs> well, well, thanks for coming on the show, Red. Uh, it was fun uh, talking with you, man. Getting to getting to hear your perspective on some things. And I'm, I'm, I, I was, I was thrilled to hear that you grew your beard because of me. So keep growing, <laughs> keep growing it, man. Oh, I will. Until somebody starts saying something like, "Oh my God, it's out of control." Tell, hey, you know what? We have different definitions of control. Just that's all you need to say. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I use the beard oil and stuff to keep it somewhat under control, you know, so it doesn't like start going this way or that way. I I, I try to trim mine. It sucks, but we could talk about beards for hours, anyways. Yeah. Uh, pre- <laughs> appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, Thanks would love for to have me. you back anytime you want to come on, man. Hey, anytime you just hit me up on Skype or um, on Facebook. I love watching you guys show. I love listening to you guys and your topics and everything. Um, I love you guys when when you rant. <laughs> oh, who us? No, never. I, I hey, try to probably. I try not to rant. <laughs> Some days I get my anger gets the best of me. 
Um, thanks a lot, Chase, for coming on the show. Um, really appreciate you having on. Um, I never really knew it's much happy. about Blacksmith until, I, until, I, uh, <laughs> until you were talking about it. So it's very, uh, it's very nice to hear that there's anarchists in, uh, in blacksmith, <laughs> blacksmithing arena. <laughs> You're the first yeah, I'll, be, I'll be in New England behind enemy lines. Perfect. <laughs> everyone needs, gu- everyone needs to know a gun maker, right? Yeah. <laughs> like I said, this, nothing, this is really, it's a, it's a, it's a very handy skill to have. So I, I want to, I want to <laughs> learn some of this stuff. So. Or a laser gun maker. Get on the laser gun. Well, I mean, gun like, thing. I've always been very strong in the belief that anarchism is tied to prepping, and it's because it all ties into self-reliance. And I've always been willing to share my knowledge with people, but I have just one simple rule. You either come in with my full attention, or you walk away. Because I'm not going to repeat myself. You know what I mean? Sure. Well, what was that? Sorry. People. <laughs> Bye, Dave. Bye. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. No, I mean, like, you know, if somebody wants to get into a project, if they half ass it, they don't give me their full attention. I'm just going to be like, you know what? You're not interested in this. Go go away. Go do something else. I'll find somebody else that I can teach this to who won't mm-hmm. waste time. Mm-hmm. Good stuff, man. Yeah. <clears throat> awesome. So, uh, Jeremy, I was just going to say, uh, please stay in the dog, dog walking business. You are fulfilling your demand. The market needs you in that, all right? <laughs> This will this will just be my new hobby. That's all. <laughs> you cannot let these people down. They they rely on you for their vacations, for their hey. you know, vacation out in the Hamptons. You know, come on, they need hey, you. Hey, hey, <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe I could start making my own choke cut, my my own uh, you know prong and choke collar. So there you go. Um, uh, I'm thinking an anarchist Caesar Milan show for True TV. Let's get it in the mix. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm thinking about selling trans- transgender bathroom signs. What do you think about that? We should just start nice. doing that. Nice. <laughs> you probably clean up. So that'll be great. <laughs> well, great conversation, gentlemen. Uh, thanks a lot, Jace, for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Uh, if anybody wants to help us out, you can uh, like, comment, share the videos, spread the message of volunteerism and freedom, uh, and also subscribe uh, to see more shows. If you want to support us, uh, you can do so through Bitcoin or Patreon. That's patreon.com slash seeds of liberty to help us out. One dollar a show is enough. It's all we ask. Um, you know, we, if you enjoy our content, you derive uh, value, you know, just feel free to compensate us because, uh, you know, value for value. In the end, we are capitalists. <laughs> so thank you very much, gentlemen. Um, this is the Seeds of Liberty podcast. Uh, wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Peace. Bye. Google volunteer.